before the break, you had a, a, a decent chance to get your teeth into some good hypnotic stories. You've got three different uh, styles of stories or three different sources to generate stories. And um, each of them has a slightly different impact, but they all have a, a, a pretty good impact, especially when it's wrapped around this wonderful parcel called hypnosis. Would that be fair to say? So what I'd like to explore now, and this is something which is it's not necessarily controversial, but it is... Um, it's not quite as cut and dried as more working with more psychological issues. And that is, how do you use hypnosis to work with health issues? Isn't that an interesting idea? Pain, of course, is one of them. And we've already kind of covered that separately. So I want to focus on more like, how do you do physical healing with hypnosis? Now, of course, you appreciate, as soon as we mention the word healing, we're getting into all kinds of ethical and legal conundrums, right? <coughs> and you must respect those each country, that, each country has different requirements, and we'll talk more about that tomorrow, but it's really your job to educate about yourself about that. What I can tell you is this. Number one, we really don't know what the extent is of the body's capacity to heal itself. It is an incredibly resilient mechanism, organism, whatever you want to call yourself. And at times, it's an incredibly, incredibly fragile one, too. So... It really is both at the same time, right? Hypnosis has been shown to have a tremendous impact on the healing process. Even um, a grab bag of generic different hypnosis approaches, or for example, applied to, um, to cancer treatment. If you did a, a, a meta-study, which is pulled together all the results from different studies, the one thing you can say, and this is not a question of is it, is it visualization, is it this, is that the other, and whatever, the one thing you can say is all hypnosis approaches, the good, the bad, and the ugly, put together, the result rate on average will uh, extend someone's lifespan by 50%. So someone with a terminal illness, someone without, I'm sorry, not a terminal illness, yeah, it'll look just fine. Someone with a terminal illness, two groups, uh, the group that just gets the regular uh, medical treatment, uh, and the group that gets the radical medical treatment plus some hypnotherapy work along with it, that second group will live, live on average 50% longer. Some go to full remission, some do not, but you understand it's a very complex area to go into. You can boost the immune system. Um, I have personally uh, relieved the, people's allergies with hypnosis. Um, some of my trainers have relieved people's allergies with hypnosis. But I can't tell you that you can relieve all allergies with hypnosis. Do you see where I'm going with this? It is simply a process that is not understood well enough yet to guarantee a result. And it's very important for you to realize that because if someone comes in for an issue that requires some kind of physical healing, whilst you can be confident that you can do something to alleviate the situation, to maybe ameliorate the situation, the one thing you can never do is promise a cure. You understand this, yes? Also, as soon as there's any kind of health implication involved, you, you're involved in the medical system, which means you've got to make sure you get some kind of a doctor referral, right? Each country is, is, is a little different in terms of what the rules are. Some are clear about the rules, some are less clear, and so on. My personal opinion is, for both ethical and legal reasons, always get a doctor's opinion or a doctor's consent if you're going to work with something physical, right? Um, so that's kind of the, the framework around it. Have you all heard about the placebo effect? Do you realize that um, 55, uh, roughly about 50-55% of the effectiveness of even the hardcore drugs, the ones that you have to get a medical prescription, you got to go to that little dodgy counter in the back of the pharmacy and uh, hand it over to get, a, to get a, a prescription, so not just the stuff you get off the shelves. Something like 50-55% of the effectiveness of that medication you're taking under such strict guidelines with all the side effects that are normally listed and have a person who has, you know, motor mouth syndrome listing on the adverts, um, about 50-55% of that effectiveness is placebo effect. The placebo effect is, um, this is a, a, a quote from one of my mentors, John Overdorf, and I think this is a really, um, this is a really, um, interesting realization that he had 
the placebo effect is probably the most researched effect in all medicine. And it's not because it's directly researched, not, it's not really that directly researched. It's because every single drug ever produced and released must beat the placebo effect. So we know a lot about it, although for some strange reason, no one uses it. Right? Um, in, order, in order to uh, beat placebo, it, needs to, uh, it depends on the, the, the industry you're in, what kind of medication it is, and what country you're in, and all that kind of stuff. But um, r normally speaking, and please, if there's anyone who's got actual uh, experience of this, you're a researcher or, or a medical doctor, feel free to um, jump in and, and add some facts to this. But um, on average, to beat, uh, the, the, the amount you have to beat placebo effect by is an, uh, is an element that has to be what's called statistically significant, right? Which on average, works out at somewhere around the 5% mark. So, if you have a drug that's 50, 55% placebo effect, and it only works 60% of the time, and has all these crazy side effects from diarrhea through to, you know, uh, death, being a kind of a <laughs> relatively major one, <laughs> it passes... It passes the, um, the uh, effectiveness test, shall we say, though, of course, other, other um, standards are, are applied also, and can be released to you as, a, as medication. Do you see how that works? Now, as a hypnotist, you should be fundamentally curious about this, because whilst you may not necessarily beat the medication that's being uh, that's made of whole industry billions, if not trillions, and that many medical doctors basically just rely on, on, on prescribing because that's what they've been trained to do. You may not get that 60% um, result rate that they do. You might drop 5%. And you have none of the side effects. From placebo? Say again? Oh, yes, yes, yes. The, the, you're correct. Um, to, to just let you know what he said. The side effects, there are side effects to the placebo effect. You're happier, healthier, less incontinent, and on occasion, less dead. <laughs> now, please, do not take this in any way um, to be a, a criticism of the medical model. I think uh, Western medicine is a wonderful thing. In the things that it excels in, it does a phenomenal job, has helped m many, many millions of people to live better lives and so on. All I'm trying to impress upon you is how much of what is currently assumed can only be achieved by medication actually is the human body doing it itself. And I'm never going to I'm not even I'm not even suggesting that you take people off medication. That's not even your responsibility. That's a medical doctor's call to make. However, to the extent that the hypnotic work that you can do can actually help improve the healing process, boost the immune system, all that sort of stuff, you can help someone get to the position where the, the, their personal physician, their doctor, can comfortably uh, say, it's okay, you can now stop taking this medication because you're healthy and strong enough for this, right? That's one of the reasons you have to work with a medical doctor. Do you understand why I'm putting all this um, cautionary stuff ahead, uh, on top of this? So, believe it or not, you know exactly how to create the conditions for that kind of healing effect to occur. You can guarantee it will occur. You can guarantee that with any specific case, they will be you know, trouble-free for the rest of their life and so on. You cannot. But what you can know with certainty is that if 100 people are in the room and you do your job well, You should be able to help, depending on the condition and so on, you should be able to do, um, help 50% of them, maybe more. It could be a lot more. This is unresearched at this point. No one's actually tried to target the placebo effect on purpose uh, extensively, shall we say. So let's just stick with the, 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 the research that's out there, that 50% of the, of the room, uh, of, the, of those 100 people, can be helped by you given the skills you currently possess. And it may be more than that.
right? The numbers I'm, I'm quoting to you, they are, they are very, they are rough things, and you know, that there may be people that disagree with how you read one set of statistics over another. It's always a point of constraint, but you get the main idea, right? <laughs> 